my morning is just escalating so nicely. I'm having such a good time. Are you having a good time? I hope we are entertaining you according to your taste. It is still Monday, yeah? Barut job, Barut Kwapa from 7 to 10 in the morning. We're going to give you sauce. So I'm standing in for my colleague doing uh, health on Monday. Nalot Nongelea Epilepsy. Living with epilepsy and just generally creating awareness. So you can call me Dr. Love since Valentine <laughs> Love and I'm just going to be a doctor for a little bit. Yeah, holla at me at Y254 on Facebook, at Y254 channel on Twitter. Hashtag is Y in the morning. Now please help me give a very, very warm welcome to our set of guests. How are you? Ni? Hi. Good, you guys good, look stunning. Thanks. I think you really do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have such a good smile. Oh. One of you and a smile. You and you. What smile? Right. What is your name, sir? My name is Frederick Beucci. Mm -hmm. I know the last name is the exotic. Is, is, is full mouth. Hey. So you can call me Be. Beucci. Ati Be. Ah. <laughs> hey, that's why. Ati Be. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, you, so uh -huh. I'm, an, I'm an epilepsy activist. Mm -hmm with the National Epilepsy Coordination Committee. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, my story about epilepsy activism dates way back to 2013. Mm -hmm. I'm so much inspired by my sister, mm -hmm. who's a last born. Mm -hmm. She's now 13 years old, mm -hmm. and she was diagnosed with epilepsy at the age of two. Wow. So that's where the journey of creating awareness began. Mm -hmm. Actually, after having known as a family that epilepsy is a medical condition mm -hmm. and it can be managed with medication. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you did not come alone, you came with a very gorgeous oh, yeah. queen. She looks <laughs> nice. Yeah. What is your name, queen? Um, I'm Elizabeth Jambi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm an interior designer mm -hmm. and artist. Mm -hmm. and I do a lot, quite a lot of things. Including looking good. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you so much. What are you on social media handles? How can we find you? Um, you can find me on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth Chambi. You can also find me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did I ask you, you have, um, I'm sure your initiatives yeah. have mm -hmm. handles. Mm -hmm. Let's get started with those first. Frederick Beucci mm -hmm. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, still on Facebook, you can search Angaza Kifafa mm -hmm. uh, na Beucci. Mm -hmm. It's a page that I post everything about epilepsy mm -hmm. and an initiative we call foundation for people with epilepsy mm -hmm. also on facebook mm -hmm. all information about what i do from monday to friday mm -hmm. with regards to epilepsy information is up there what is epilepsy epilepsy is a medical condition mm -hmm. we should start from that because so many other people describe it as a disease mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's not a disease mm -hmm. it's a condition important to know because a condition means any person can get it mm -hmm. even later in life even mm -hmm. later in life because wow. it's a medical condition that is caused by brain damage mm -hmm. so so long as you have the brain mm -hmm. you are at a risk at some point in life mm -hmm. to get epilepsy awareness mm -hmm. but it has its causes because mm -hmm. until the brain gets a damage mm -hmm. that could be through either an injury, mm -hmm. you have had an accident, mm -hmm. you got a head injury, mm -hmm. the injury went deep into touching your brain, mm -hmm. later in life you end up getting epilepsy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I may cut you off, you said uh, your sister was diagnosed at two years old. Yes. How old were you when you found out that you were living with a condition? I was seven. Seven? Yeah. That must have been hard. And their kids are mean, they're so mean. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you, uh -huh. you will find like there's a connection of children mm -hmm. having epilepsy you know from the from the word go and it's not because maybe a mother or a father had epilepsy that's why a child had it so it's not genetic the mm -hmm. challenges that actually prone children mm -hmm. to be at risk of getting epilepsy at the point of birth mm -hmm. and that's why we are emphasizing every other time a mother has conceived they are due to deliver they go to the hospital mm. because some of them take options of either going to traditional back mm. attendance mm -hmm. and they put the child at risk at of risk. missing mm -hmm. head injury mm -hmm. which probably develops into you know touching the brain mm -hmm. and 
thereafter a child developing mm -hmm. epilepsy. All right, so we know that it's a condition, it's not condition. a disease, and it's something that is, wow, clearly anyone with a brain seeing as how if you can hear me exactly. that brain <laughs> yeah that's a bit alarming i did not know that yeah. okay so what are the triggers of epilepsy uh, let me ask let me start with her because yeah. she does live sure. with it what are your triggers um i got so many triggers mm -hmm. but um flickering lights mm -hmm. is one of them uh i cannot also stay on the computer on the laptop for a long time mm -hmm. yeah so e much. history and Netflix and chill, mm -mm. <laughs> like it's just too much. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, too much excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I get so excited and you know, mm -hmm. yeah, when I'm also stressed up, mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. you know, um, when I'm so tired also. Wow. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. That's hard. So you're, you're really tired and then now suddenly you have a seizure. So yeah. what do you do? <laughs> I'm down at that time. Ama? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like how, how, do you always have a companion with you? Like uh, you make sure that you... Yeah. Um, everyone in my family knows about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also people who are close to me, my friends, mm -hmm. know about this. So yeah, most of the time I have someone next to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I won't tell you guys a story. I don't story. get hurt. Yeah. Mm. It's, 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 a, it's a funny, it's not a very funny story. It's, it's a story, just a story. <laughs> so when I was in high school, um, we had, I, I can't remember her name now. But I remember she was very pretty and she was a prefect and she had epilepsy. So I knew she was living with it. It was random information. But until I saw the seizure, like, I, I had, I took a moment and you know, it's ironic yeah. because my, uh, there's mm -hmm. someone in my family who lives with autism and who's non-verbal. So mm -hmm. you'd think I'd it be ready, ready for, I, wa I really wasn't, I really wasn't ready. So I, I, I didn't know what to do and I felt so helpless. I, I truly did not, I didn't know how to help. I didn't know if I, if yeah. I should hold you, if, I, if I'm going to make it worse, like, like what's going on? I want to know, first of all, how you deal with the stigma of that. And then since we like to do practicals up in here, oh, yeah. we're going to figure out how to help. <laughs> how yeah. to help. Yeah, so maybe let's start with the stigma. Like how, like maybe you just met someone, you're hitting it off, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a vibe, it's a vibe, and then suddenly something happened, it's a trigger, and now they don't look at you the same. Has that happened to you and how yeah. do you deal with such things? It happens a lot, mm -hmm. but um, I've learned how to love myself, mm -hmm. yeah? And I've learned to go for whatever I want, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. So nothing pulls me back anymore. Mm. Yeah. I like that. I think you're a bit more brave <laughs> than the rest of us, <laughs> yo, out of necessity. Yeah, yeah sure. And, and how did you, maybe with your sister, how did you handle that? Well, th there are a lot of myths and misconceptions that come along with epilepsy because mm -hmm. it's it's not a subject that started the other day mm -hmm. those that are Christians you go to the Bible you see at some point Jesus healed a person with mm -hmm. epilepsy and there are those that pick it up from there because when you read that verse mm -hmm. in Matthew it says you know he cast the demons for epilepsy and you I'm know, really they, glad you said that <laughs> because it's in Africa and yeah, anything yes. we don't understand, new chow. Yeah. Yes. So that has formed basis of the background of what people know epilepsy is all about. Mm -hmm. Coming from Mombasa, the whole thing of mm -hmm. well, witchcrafty and Dani, deep. Sana, mm -hmm. sana, sana. So even for my sister, that was the perception. Oh. And for me, I wanted to change the story mm -hmm. because from family members, you know, close relatives mm -hmm. to villagers up to the church, mm -hmm. they thought that we had done something to our sister so that we could amass oh somewhere. Oh my you gosh. Know, oh. And, and it wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So to change the story, actually, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so many other myths and misconceptions, you know, kept coming and coming. Mm -hmm. Others you know, think epilepsy is contagious. So mm. once they see a person down, you run. Mm. They, are, <laughs> they are jacking and they're having Aww. a seizure. Mm -hmm. To touch them, you know, they feel it's like they will have it. Mm -hmm. you know, so they thinking it's a curse, thinking it's witchcrafty and all these things, mm -hmm. yeah? So you can bet the kind of stigma that it was there. Because mm -hmm. we go with our sister in a public place and you know, her seizure frequency mm -hmm. before medication was at after every 20 minutes. 
Why? You she, can't even have a conversation. You can't really. So by the time we were seeking medication, mm -hmm. she had so many injuries. Oh. Actually, epilepsy in itself does not kill, but the seizures mm -hmm. that prone somebody to sometimes you fall on water mm -hmm. on the stones. So and the when worst. You fall, let's say sorry. Yeah. In a the worst case scenario, you fall inside water. You're basically helpless now. Yeah. You are helpless. I actually have a cousin who died of epilepsy. Oh my days! Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. so sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's stop being so sad for a second and call our person, our actor of the day. Help me welcome Aiko. Woo! Aiko, yay! So what Aiko is going to do, he's going to lie down and mm -hmm. I'm hoping that he seizes. Yeah, you're yeah. going to just shake, shake a bit. <laughs> so this is someone who has a seizure, okay? Yeah, so this yeah. is what we call a, gen uh -huh. a generalized seizure. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. somebody would... Um, suddenly, you know, mm -hmm. fall down. Mm -hmm. Others would have some kind of a voice coming out, mm -hmm. very scary one. Mm -hmm. Before they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and get someone to tell you. Yeah, a very scary one. Uh -huh. Before they, they, they go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So most of the time, it depends. Mm -hmm. They would be lying in different position mm -hmm. because you have people falling from the front mm -hmm. side, oh, from the back, oh from the days. side. Uh -huh. So that is what causes so many people having injuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have dislocated arms, Boy, legs, yeah. and such like things. Mm -hmm. So we have about five quick things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Shake if it, I shake could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our friend here uh, has just had us a seizure, uh -huh. and 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 they are down. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are shaking and everything. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you are supposed to do mm -hmm. is to stay calm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to help this person. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that make people fall down mm -hmm. or faint even. So stay calm mm -hmm. to just ascertain what has happened to the guy mm -hmm. or whoever has fallen down. Then mm -hmm. number two, if there are any sharp objects around, mm -hmm. you remove them. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember we've said that epilepsy is a condition that's caused by brain damage. Mm -hmm. So anything that might cause some head injury mm -hmm. and putting him or her at a risk, mm -hmm. you make sure you, you remove. Okay. It could be in a classroom or it could be on the street, mm -hmm. you remove. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing and very important, mm -hmm. you look for something soft mm -hmm. and you put beneath the head. Okay. Mm -hmm. It could Can be a like cushion. A oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Guys, we are feeling at home here. <laughs> yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. So, you put something mm -hmm. soft beneath the head. Oh, silale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> silale. Mm -hmm. So our person here mm -hmm. is continuing to jack mm -hmm. the legs and the hands mm -hmm. because that's how a seizure manifests itself. Mm -hmm. What we just need to be so careful about is the head. Mm -hmm. Okay. At that point in time, if they're putting on very tight clothing, mm -hmm. that's number four, you mm -hmm. try and lose them. Okay. Because... A seizure, again, is manifested and as it continues because there is no complete circulation of oxygen to the brain. Mm -hmm. And sometimes because of tight clothing, they might not be able to breathe mm -hmm. so properly. Mm -hmm. So you try and, mm -hmm. you try and uh, loosen mm -hmm. the clothing. Most of the time, a seizure might not last for more than five minutes. Mm -hmm. Actually, at most, it goes to five minutes. Mm -hmm. Some, it will be two minutes. Some it will be even in seconds, mm. just falling down oh. and it's over. It kind of sounds like fainting though. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and they are what now we call lookalikes. Mm -hmm. Because so many people also again confuse epilepsy mm -hmm. to other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. So number five, when the seizure is almost over, mm -hmm. you roll them in what we call a recovery position. position. So a recovery position, mm -hmm. you lie them on their side mm -hmm. like, like that mm -hmm. you fold their legs like that mm -hmm. and you put one hand here mm -hmm. and this hand is there with the with the cushion, with the cushion mm -hmm. like that okay okay so why, why is this posture important what is so happening here? this posture is important because mm -hmm. most of them when they're having a seizure they have some kind of foam coming out uh -huh. some kind of white foam uh -huh. so if they are lying on their backs mm -hmm. chances are the foam will be mm -hmm. going back mm -hmm. and they can actually choke mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. because they are jacking at that point in time mm -hmm. and it's like forcing something inside mm -hmm. their mouth. So they might end up choking and even causing death Oy. at that point in time. Okay. So this position helps the foam to just come out naturally, like naturally so. slowly, and mm -hmm. you are sure it's not going back. Mm -hmm. But it's a position that also gives him mm -hmm. an easy time to also breathe. Mm -hmm. And by the time the seizure is over, mm -hmm. with this kind of position, they can support themselves to stand up. Oh, so this is during the seizure or as so, the seizure is coming? So the end? seizure is almost over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by the time you have rolled them in the recovery position, mm -hmm. then the seizure is completely over. Mm -hmm. So you're just helping, you are staying with that person. And this is very important as the last one. Mm -hmm. You stay with that person until they are fully recovered mm -hmm. from the seizure. Mm -hmm. Because most of them, when they just come out from the seizure, they are a little bit confused. Disoriented. Yeah, so if it was on the street and they want to almost cross the road, hey, you can imagine. No. Yeah, yeah. So that's what happens. Mm -hmm. There are three things that people do. Mm -hmm. And since time immemorial, I would say, mm -hmm. they have been thinking that's faster, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So when person is jacking, what you're not supposed to do Number one is do not put anything inside their mouth. Mm -hmm. Anything. There are those that rush with a spoon, mm. with a stick. Why? Because they think when they're having a seizure, they're they bite their, their, their tongue or yeah. their oh. lips yeah. out of that seizure, oh. which is true. Sometimes it happens mm -hmm. so. But the first two, three seconds of a seizure, mm -hmm. a person already, if it is biting their tongue, mm -hmm. they have bitten their tongue. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing that you can do about mm -hmm. it. At the end of the day, it appears to just be a wound that can be treated. Mm -hmm. But when somebody is having a seizure, you know, muscles tighten. Mm -hmm. And you are there trying to push something in. Mm -hmm. You are not sure at what point the seizure will be over and the muscles will relax. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they relax and you've been there trying to push something. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it goes all the way. <laughs> So you guessed it right. So that's what can happen. Mm -hmm. So you cause that person even more injury and even death. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second thing you're not supposed to do is as they are jacking, mm -hmm. do not restrain them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let them. Let them just jack. Mm -hmm. That's just how a seizure comes out. Because mm -hmm. a seizure, if you go back to the medical part of it, mm -hmm. you'll be told it's more of some electrical action happening mm -hmm. in the body and there's no complete coordination with the brain mm -hmm. so that causes the, the jacking okay okay All so right. do not restrain them mm -hmm. when they are jacking mm -hmm. just be careful about the head mm -hmm. leave them to do the drama mm -hmm. because in two three minutes time it's it will be, be over, over. Okay. and finally mm -hmm. do not give them any drink mm -hmm. or any food at the point when they are having a seizure. For example, give them water. Yeah. <laughs> give them water. That kind of a thing. Okay. So those are the three things that people have been doing which are wrong. The first five steps we have described, mm. that's what you're supposed to do. All right, thank you so very much. Have a seat. Aiko, <laughs> thank, thank you, you for being here. Thank you, <laughs> Tony. Oh my gosh, you're so cool. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now maybe at, in conclusion, you can yeah. introduce to us the, the concept of the fair, the Afro fair. Yeah, you? we did. Mm -hmm. So um, in bid of uh, trying to create awareness about epilepsy, I am an ambassador for a campaign we call Angaza Kifafa. Mm -hmm. So every year we go to counties, we train the community health workers, basic facts about epilepsy, mm -hmm as we have demonstrated here. Mm -hmm. So they can, as well, after that, go ahead to the communities mm -hmm. and also spread the word. Mm -hmm. But since 2015, we've also been hosting an event we call Epilepsy Afro Fashion Fair. Mm -hmm. And the event is about empowering persons living with epilepsy, mm -hmm. and they have talents mm -hmm. in fashion mm -hmm. and design. Mm -hmm. and the essence of this event actually is also a fundraiser to mobilize resources mm -hmm. and support children to get medication. The goal in epilepsy treatment is to make sure w the person's seizures are well managed. Mm -hmm. Epilepsy cannot be cured, mm -hmm. but the seizures can be managed. Mm -hmm. 
So we have hosted this event since 2015. Mm -hmm. And this year, we are hosting it in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. It will be in a week's time, actually, mm -hmm. on 25th mm -hmm. at Imperial Hotel. Mm -hmm. The information about how you can get tickets to that event, mm -hmm. you know, are on our social media pages, as mm -hmm. we have mentioned, Frederick Beucci Foundation for People with Epilepsy, mm -hmm. Angaza Kifafa with Beucci, all those information are there. Mm -hmm. If you are not able to come to Kisumu, mm -hmm. you can just buy a ticket mm -hmm. because that directly goes towards supporting a child mm -hmm. living with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And those are at the youthful stage mm -hmm. and they are passionate about, you know, fashion and design. We connect them to established fashion designers. Aww. Them living with epilepsy, so they are able to actually go ahead and pursue what they have loved most. Mm -hmm. And just making life for them you know, be good and telling other people that they can live a normal life mm -hmm. like any other person else. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Queen, is, is, if I may ask that you give someone a uh, steam, yani encourage someone, like not really about um, the condition that you're living with, but Apoko, I'm very big on loving yourself. Mm -hmm. Very, very <laughs> big. Yeah, and it's beautiful to see that you, you can have a condition and still manage. So I couldn't excuse it down, Sawa. So please encourage uh, um, a teenager, maybe someone who looks up to you and like, eh, at a minute, mm -hmm. kakwa Your camera is this one. Oh, all right. Um, I think as a, as a youth, yeah, um, living with this condition, I think um, even if you're not with this condition, but uh, you're out there, I think you should go for what you want love yourself even more and um, yeah you, i think you should go out meet people r reach out to what you want to do in life and go for it don't feel you know mm -hmm. don't feel like you're not there or you're not worthy you're, you're not worthy. worth it yeah exactly Yani shortly, I, <laughs> shortly, in short, usiogopem to it down. Sawa. Be respectful, be humble, and be loving, and just do you. Exactly. All right. It has been, again, a Health on Monday, standing in for a colleague. We want to wrap this up. Thank you so very much for joining us. Upcoming, more sauce. I told you it's until 10 a.m., so you can't go anywhere. <laughs>